Vikram, welcome to uh, another episode of Engage Cast. Thank you so much for doing this, and uh, it is really uh, good to have you with us. Thank you so much for doing this on a uh, weekend. Uh, no, it must have been a busy week for you, but uh, once again, really excited to have you, and uh, we would love to have a little chat about the impact of COVID and the stuff that you guys are doing right now. Um, once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, Priyam. Uh, it's it's a pleasure. Uh, yeah, uh, when you had discussed about this uh, a couple of weeks back, I thought this is a, this is a good initiative that you guys are uh, focusing on, and I'm I'm very happy that I'm part of it. Fantastic, fantastic. So very quickly, Ramlingam, I'll uh, ask you to give a quick introduction about yourself, uh, about your brand, and the cool stuff that you do for Coin DCX. Sure, thank you. Uh, I head marketing uh, specifically at Coin DCX. Uh, I've had past experience working with. Um, brands in like of some popular FMCG brands like Coca-Cola and Cipla and I've had also like some experience running my own company right so that's that's the thing about me uh, about our brand uh, or about the company that I represent CoinDCX. CoinDCX is India's largest and uh, uh, and safest uh, cryptocurrency exchange right um, this is a place where you can uh, come and purchase your first Bitcoin right? And we have been in business since almost now two years. Um, we have got great partners. Uh, from a liquidity perspective, we have got uh, the largest liquidity pool in India. And uh, just just a recent update, we have got, uh, we just raised our uh, series uh, funding lockdown period, right? And- uh, Fantastic, congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, and what uh, the additional thing that happened is, uh, so in our industry, there was the Supreme Court uh, that played a key role, post which uh, we have seen a growth of like 50,000 users post in, in just a month or so. Right? That's the kind of growth we are seeing uh, currently and that's, that's the kind of business we are into. Brilliant, brilliant. <clears throat> that was a bit of a surprise, but a great surprise. Uh, most definitely, that is something to be very happy about raising a round of funding. That too, in such times, I think it's commendable. Uh, congratulations once again. Thank you. So, um, I'd like to start off our conversation, and of course, I'd like to uh, enter in uh, the agenda uh, right off the bat. So, COVID-19 has uh, has had a massive impact on businesses and individuals around the world, and uh, it's truly a global pandemic. Uh, which has been a one-of-a-kind situation. Never before has the entire world been suffering at the same time because of the same thing. And uh, for obvious reasons, it has had, uh, it has had, of course, negative, some in some cases, positive impact on businesses. Right. Now for you, how has COVID impacted you as a professional? And of course, uh, your brand and the industry in which you operate. Sure. So... Uh... Just, just to give you some more context, right? Uh, before uh, March 3rd or March 4th, right, when the Supreme Court ruling came in favor of uh, you know, companies like us, right? uh, before that, there was a lot of confusion in the Indian markets around the validity of trading in cryptocurrencies. Right? People were not very sure. They were, they have got, they got a lot of uh, misleading uh, news articles and stuff, which, uh, which, which kept people away from the overall uh, uh, overall business or overall industry per se, right? Um, so we were one of the petitioners who were in the court uh, trying to get a legal solution to this. And once we got this uh, legal clarity from Supreme Court, uh, this, this was an amazing time for us, right? Um, the markets in India opened up. There were not just uh, us as businesses, even competition, even uh, global industries wanted to enter India, and right? global companies wanted to enter India, and a lot of activity was happening around that front. And around the same time, right, like a couple of weeks down, we had this entire lockdown and you know, this COVID thing and things happening around, right? Uh, so, yes, it did give us a big, big impact, right? It was the most important time for business, right? In in almost two years, we were having one of the best times. Uh, but then COVID did come in. Uh, how it impacted business per se, right? Um, I, I think I've discussed this with you in the past as well. Like we are a completely digital business. We don't have a physical uh, 
or very limited physical touch points. But one of the most important touch points that we had was KYC, for example, right? Uh, we still need to do our KYC as our customers. We are a financial business after all, right? And that became a bit tricky during this period, right? Although we do KYCs digitally and everything is online, but we still need people to process this. And this is where it started impacting us as a business. Um, so in, in an ideal scenario, when you have a, such a big upswing, you may you will immediately look at hiring more people, hiring more contract employees, outsourcing this job, right? These things were uh, out of questions, right? Because of the uh, COVID-19 thing. People could not turn up to, to, to office or, uh, onboarding uh, or increasing uh, resources or, uh, was becoming a bit more tricky. Mm -hmm. In the me in the same time, we also need to take care of our employees. Right? We have to take care of our teams. Their safety is paramount. And as a young organization, we had people across from across the country um, working with us. And it was very important for us to ensure uh, if and when uh, a lockdown or something like this happens, we have some way of taking care of them. He's, we, it's, a, it's a young company, young boys and girls working uh, and they, they might find it difficult to go through this lockdown phase, right? Right. managing their house, managing their uh, work. Right? So these were the points that we had in mind uh, and as an organization, I, I felt very proud that we were, uh, uh, we were very proactive in this. Um, we did a dry run of a lockdown ourselves, right? two weeks uh, uh, almost. 10 days before the actual lockdown came into place, we did a dry run saying that let's, what will happen if the lockdown does come. And that kind of uh, a visionary planning was something that helped us. Right? And mm -hmm. today, uh, none of my uh, uh, team members is stuck. Right? Any, like They're not stuck in a place where they cannot do anything. Most of them got their opportunity to go back home, uh, work from their uh, home locations. We had things planned out in advance. Uh, so there was a hiccup right, uh, at the start with a boom for, for the industry. We also, this, that boom itself, we were not able to capture it fully. Mm -hmm. uh, however, if you look at it from an industry perspective, has the industry slowed down or is it affecting our business altogether? I wouldn't say that that is what, I wouldn't say that it is happening. However, the growth, I would say, in the business is something that is uh, not as expected, right? We, we could, we can grow much faster than what we are, um, uh, what we are getting to do today. For example, uh, if I have to uh, do an event, right, for the growth uh, perspective, that is out of question. I cannot do advertisements. I can't do sponsorships, right? I'm talking purely from a marketing perspective. Things have gone online, right? And I, I, I being a, a B2C business, right? I would, I would love everyone to come online, but that's not the case. Right? People are across, and it is there is nothing that says that uh, if you are not uh, able to attend a webinar, you are not my customer. Right? So, mm -hmm. so these are the challenges. Uh, fortunately, the overall business has not started slowing down. Right, uh, there are still positive uh, indicators for the business. However. Uh, we will, I personally feel that we will, we are not able to uh, capitalize on the opportunity that we got post the Supreme Court uh, ruling. So that right. is something that is an impact. If I have to put it up. Awesome. Awesome. I, I'll, I'll ask a follow up question to uh, the fact that you guys haven't, you feel that you haven't been able to capitalize on the Supreme Court ruling. But before I get to that, I had, uh, of course, asked you about uh, your, your, your job profile. You think your job profile as a as a, a brand leader? Do you think your job profile has been affected uh, comparatively in the past before COVID, when your traditional marketing strategy was still considered to be effective? But now things are so different. And uh, do you think that has basically brought about a change in the way you look at branding now, especially for your brand? Uh, not exactly. See, uh, I I am a firm. Uh, I have a firm belief that uh, brand or branding is independent of the channel. Right? Uh, it's, it's a concept, it's a benefit right? that I, I talk about. People uh, perceive a certain benefits that they achieve, uh, that they can uh, extract out of a particular brand and that is why they believe in it. Right? Uh, so that is where 
a hundred year old brand has survived and thrived irrespective of mediums right like for example coca cola right it it, it existed a hundred years back when half of the mediums available today weren't existing right so mediums are just going to help you gain more uh, uh, reach in that mm-hmm. sense but as a brand it doesn't get affected right? uh, specific to my role or specific to the the role of brand right of a brand leader uh, i think this this is an this is a unique opportunity for people right to to uh, to reimagine the role right and to understand go back to the basics right and understand what uh what in what way you can uh, utilize your skill sets right uh, with the limited uh, opportunities you have how do you maximize each limited opportunity right and this is something that a brand leader would actually appreciate right there is it's a, it's more of a strategic uh, call right rather than just running behind a specific target mm-hmm. so from that perspective yes uh, it is important and secondly is the role important for organizations yes it, today it is more than like more important uh, primarily because of uh, because of the lack of uh, mediums available or probably the uh, the dip in the reach available right that much more important to be on top of the mind right, right. and uh, we don't want to go into the adage of out of sight out of mind so mm-hmm. we have to be smart enough to be still present wait for the day when things do get better and that's mm-hmm. the moment which the world is and prepare for that day and this is again a good time to prepare again a good time to plan but i i do believe that the role uh, or the, the the function has a lot more importance today right uh, and if if you look at it from a particular the from the uh, correct angle right uh, i think there's a lot of opportunities there brilliant um, i'm glad you brought that perspective i have another question which i'll ask you probably uh, further down the line uh but before that i wanted to just link into the question that the point that you made about supreme court ruling happening uh precariously close to the lockdown and it must have uh, of course uh, been a great source of joy for you guys to uh, to uh, to win that uh, uh, in your favor and be hit by a pandemic of global proportions immediately afterwards so one thing that of course it has done is uh, there's a lot of negative sentiment in the market because the economies the world over are tanking and uh, liquidity is of course vanishing it's dying people are holding their money because of so many uncertainties that are involved right nobody really knows what's going to happen 6 months down the line i we have seen reports of mutual funds tanking and some of them have vanished entirely you have a couple of years old three years old mutual funds with so much of uh, market value uh, massive capitalization just wiped off right now of course that has been uh, due to covid has that impacted the cryptocurrency game as well or you guys are still better off in comparison okay so i'll put it in two points like two uh, uh, ways right uh, first point about uh, cryptocurrency Uh, specific to india cryptocurrencies have for the industry itself has seen a very uh, tough time right sure beyond, beyond the pandemic itself right sure. we had to be invent we had to re- we had to fight our way through right uh, so in a sense the industry and the the loyal customer base and the community that we have is uh, attuned to all these things right uh, and they are prepared for such an eventuality cryptocurrency in itself was born out of uh, a recessionary trend right uh, it was born around in the 2008 2009 recession right and the whole concept came about during that time about uh, ownership of money right who owns your who owns the money right it is kept in banks it is kept with mutual funds it is kept with various assets asset managers but who actually owns your money mm-hmm. and how do i uh, uh, get back the ownership of Uh, the value that i store in in each cash or in each uh, uh, financial instrument uh, so cryptocurrency came out of this thought and this thought is even valid today right uh, that's where uh, cryptocurrency seems to be a bit uncorrelated with the uh, uh, with the pandemic right uh, there has been a lot of uh, uh, up trends uh, that is there like for example the stock markets so uh, fabulous week i would say in the in the last week or so in india right uh, but on a similar times uh, similar lines uh, 
crypto saw a fabulous week, but it was not related to what's happening in the uh, in the industry, right? Or in the in the government or in the country, right? Uh, so it it has been largely uncorrelated, also because of the number of people involved. Today, uh, it's less than a percent in India who are into crypto, right? Uh, that itself uh, also showcases like why we are so uh, so detached from the overall economy. So when you say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when you say less than a percent, you mean the entire population of India? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. the population of India, a percent or so, or even hardly a percent or so is in crypto. And that is also a reason why it has remained largely uncorrelated. Uh, but the fundamentals of it also keep it uncorrelated because it is about ownership of money, right? Um, irrespective of which asset class. So crypto in itself has its own assets, right? Uh, we have... Uh, SIPs, we have mutual funds, we have uh, all sorts of financial instruments that is available in a traditional world is also available in a crypto world, right? The difference being is the ownership, right? And who owns that asset and how, how will you uh, establish the fa uh, establish or the uh, non-repudiation and various other aspects. That is where crypto gets an edge and where people have always, like the believers in crypto have always felt that cryptocurrencies are hence a better alternative to the traditional systems. Uh, from a, from a, a financial perspective, right, people, yes, are pulling out liquidity, right? but uh, eventually they will have to invest it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Any lying idol is, uh, there's erodes in value. Right? Sure. So, uh, where, which, so initially when the, uh, the pandemic, uh, in the first initial phase of the pandemic, gold purchase uh, skyrocketed. Um, now that has now been moved to say stocks and stuff, which because things are moving in that direction, but a lot of money also came into crypto. And, uh, I remember the prices in crypto went as beyond $10,000 for a Bitcoin, for example, and Bitcoin dominance was almost as high as 70, 75%. So people think people uh, realize the potential, uh, and, uh, irrespective of the pandemic, yep. Uh, the pandemic, in a way, is also, uh, I, I don't like to put it that way, but uh, over, a, over a period of time, it has acted as a catalyst for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not the reason why people should be into crypto. But people, are, it's, it's just a, uh, it's just an e-jerk reaction for now. But there are a lot of people who, who are coming into crypto because of the these reasons uh, would actually stay back because of the advantages that they see. And that is something that is good uh, for the industry as, as a whole. Awesome, awesome. So there has been uh, a proper, uh, I won't say a, a max, a, a very large number, but there has you have seen an uptick in acquisition post the pandemic. And but unfortunately, what you are saying is it's probably not for all the right reasons because of a love for crypto or a very deep understanding. It's more of a lack of trust in our traditional uh, financial system probably which is making them invest in crypto so that's what i have gathered now uh, yeah i wouldn't say the entirety is like that sure there is definitely a portion of it which is like that okay mm -hmm. uh, crypto itself was built on that concept right crypto yes. itself came as an alternative to the existing financial systems absolutely uh, and hence uh, people who have uh, trust issues with the current financial systems logically will uh, will move to crypto right uh, in terms of acquisition right so owing to this kind of a, a scenario that we thought is possible we focused a lot on uh, uh, on acquiring the right kind of customers right and our acquisition was not about uh, selling a get quick rich scheme but mm -hmm. rather selling uh, the benefits of crypto right mm -hmm. so uh, as a business we launched a, a campaign called uh, uh, hashtag try crypto. Okay. Uh, we as a business committed uh, 100 million INR to it, saying that we would want to focus on education. We would want to focus on uh, on creation of awareness about the financial asset beyond just the money making potential of it. Yes, there is a huge potential of making uh, a lot of money, but that is not the main reason for which I will take my industry out to people. Right. Uh, a lot of focus is on education, we ourselves have committed to open an academy for this uh, specific purpose. We have also seen um, uh, exchanges and competition actually helping us uh, and showing their support 
to our initiative because it's it see the industry is a very small industry and we are very closely knit industry right we in the past have run uh, uh, like before the supreme court uh, verdict we ourselves conducted a couple of uh, uh, cross community uh, initiatives where we invited the exchanges where we invited key opinion leaders where we invited even competition from india as well as globally to come and join us work together to find a solution because uh, it, it's we all are believers in the uh, in the in the concepts of crypto in the concepts of uh, of, of financial independence right and we believe in that and that is something that we need to communicate mm-hmm. on just the money making ability you can obviously make money uh, through various instruments including crypto uh, but there is some something beyond that beyond just making money that is what we want to sell uh, so that's where we focused a lot when we uh, created our acquisition strategy uh, post the supreme court uh, thing right we focused a lot more on education side and um, that's where uh, we've seen a majority of our uh, majority of our uh, acquisition uh, or customers that we have acquired mm-hmm. over the last uh, 40 days or so uh, coming for the uh, coming through an educative education channel right brilliant and uh, that is where uh, we we beyond just the money making thing right? so that is where we are uh, focusing a lot more now awesome awesome so i hope that helps you guys increase improve the quality of the leads as well that is something that every business uh, would want to do education always helps uh, well of course i think most people associate crypto with a get rich quick kind of a scheme that's the kind of uh, hype uh, it has built around itself especially because of the boom and right. of course then uh, there are some people who understand the nitty gritties of the complex world that crypto itself uh, lies in but apart from that uh, i wanted to understand a couple of things then i'm glad that you helped me uh, build some context so it's interesting to hear that you guys are seeing uh, improvement uh, or rather you guys are uh, looking at an increase in the number of conversions or sale for now on the exchange which is which is very nice for you guys but did you guys uh, envision some kind of uh, i mean or did you guys expect that this pandemic is going to last for such a long time so therefore the existing marketing strategy that we have is probably not going to be useful anymore because i am in talks with a lot of people and why i am saying this is because so many people had uh, plans to of course do their traditional marketing strategies to acquire more build more spend a lot more and now all of that has just you know gone out of the window nobody is allowed to spend and the first guys that get affected are the marketing team so yeah. have you guys witnessed something or experienced something like that and if you have what is the marketing strategy that you guys are following now so um, yeah so if you if you look at it right um, this is the time when the marketing budgets are actually planned yep april uh, april is the month ideally yep. when the budgets are all uh, allocated yep. planned and the entire year is planned Yep. Right. Um, so uh, I wouldn't say that the budgets have dried up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so traditionally, our our industry is not focused a lot on uh, events and stuff like that, mm-hmm. right? or on uh, broadcast as a medium. We are not focused a lot there. We are a pure digital uh, business, as as I pointed out in the, in the past. Right. So our focus is a lot more in that direction, right? and our budgets have uh, improved in that direction. um what has uh, changed right uh, is for example uh, if you look at uh, because you are also into brand marketing right if you look at uh, uh, selecting a, a brand uh, campaign for example uh, or a brand marketing campaign for example uh, my target audience is ideally uh, a male dominated uh, somewhere between 25 to 35 right and uh, sports is a fabulous uh, a fabulous uh, medium for me right but now that is completely out of picture right? uh, so live event live events and sports and things like that have gone out and for me to build my brand in that direction becomes a bit of a challenge right so we were into plans of uh, say talking to certain uh, international uh, events as well right like um talk we were in talks with say popular tennis events football uh, leagues right now all those things have dried up yep so 
those those are the things that have affected but uh, i wouldn't say overall uh, budgets have been affected on the contrary because of certain benefits in our industry uh, we have actually got additional budgets because we feel that this is a very good time for us right uh, now, and it, this is independent of the pandemic right? this is a good time for us uh, looking at uh, india as a business looking at the world as a business there are a lot of things happening within the industry like a uh, popular activity of halving is happening bitcoin halving is happening uh, in in 10 days from now so the overall industry is on an upswing uh, the belief so i'll just tell you what happened in the last 6 months right uh, germany france uh, south korea japan right they passed laws making bitcoin as a legal tender right overall the uh, there were a lot of laws that came into picture Uh, close close to home uh, we just had a facebook geo deal right the facebook geo deal in itself is a very a big boost to even crypto because uh, G, um, the in the last agm uh, of reliance right reliance had made an announcement that they, they are going to set up the world's largest blockchain network right uh, right so with that and with the facebook thing coming in so every public bo- blockchain will have a crypto that's the logic behind it and with the whole system in play we'll have a we might have a fabulous thing coming out from reliance itself right in terms of the cryptocurrencies uh there has been a positive sentiment overall like when the first uh, draft bill came out um from uh, when or the first draft uh, not the bill but a uh, a summary of discussions that came out from the interministerial board that I was formed for making a law in india from that point to the current point there has been a stark change even the the second draft and the third draft of more favorable right including uh, the budgetary allocations in the recent uh, budget announcement that was made in january a lot of things are uh, seeing a lot of positive uh, focus and hence uh, india as a business for us has grown up we are a, we do have a global business line as well right and uh, overall in india we are seeing a good opportunity fantastic uh, the, channels, the channels are restricted the mediums are restricted but sure. i don't think there is a problem with the uh, budgets at least for our industry awesome awesome so budgets are mostly uh, well uh, unchanged for you guys which is which is great news i think fantastic uh, of course channels uh, reachability has been affected most definitely this might attract a lot of people <laughs> yeah it might come as a shock to a lot of people but hey <laughs> every day you learn something new that's that's a, that's really good news for you guys most definitely i think uh, since you guys also strongly believe that it's a great time for crypto in india so uh, you guys are happy with that information so has that affected your engagement strategy as well is there something you guys are doing on the engagement front to probably do more uh, get people to engage more with the product and invest yeah so uh See, as as a business, we are a very strong community-driven business. Right, my biggest channel would be my community, right? Uh, because uh, most of my mediums, right, um, there is a lot of restriction there as well. Like, for example, Twitter or Google does not allow us to uh, even still, right, to allow us to do advertising. Right? Oh, uh, and this is something which is across the globe, so it it becomes a bit difficult. We have seen. Uh, um, uh, various comp- exchanges or competition trying various smart ways we have tried a few smart ways on uh, twitter and google our, ourselves but uh, the strongest medium for us is the community and is the product and hence keeping them engaged has been something that is is paramount for us irrespective of uh, irrespective of covid or not right? mm-hmm. uh, so and we because we are such a uh, as I, i would say right like it's a percent less than a percentage in in the uh, from a uh, users point of view right so it it is paramount for me to add additional 1% i it cannot be done without the help of my community right and hence community engagement activities are for sure an important aspect uh, closer to the industry what we are right now working on is getting more and more uh, cryptocurrencies available in india so Uh, a couple of weeks back we uh, introduced a new token called mco right uh, and just a week back we were, we introduced another second token called cro right and th- this was a, a 
the news. We did a lot of AMAs with our uh, with our community, introducing these new tokens, opening up new markets. So we are in the process of say focusing on adding new new tokens and new INR markets. Say in every 15 days, uh, with, with the focus saying that we give more and more opportunities to our uh, to our community to, uh, to trade, to invest. Uh, to experience the the global uh, uh, tokens that are available, bringing them to India. Uh, there's a lot of focus there, a lot of uh, energy spent on that direction so that people are engaged. We, we conduct regular trading competitions, right? Whenever we list a token and things like that, we conduct competitions, we conduct uh, various activities to ensure that uh, there, is, there is a lot of activity that is happening and uh, Eventually, uh, there is there is uh, people uh, currently in the community are seekers of knowledge for now, right? And we ensure that they get the right education, right? Uh, uh, because see, what has happened is uh, in the last two years, right? Before the the banking ban came in, and what has happened? Uh, so before the banking ban came in, there was a there was one important reason why the banking ban came in was about uh, the the reasons of scams, right? So crypto was not, you know, not uh, spoken in a very positive sense, right? Two years back. So once we have got this clear legal uh, uh, clarity, I, I or uh, Coin Six as a business don't want people to get back into those those times, right? And hence, it is very important for us to keep the uh, communication open. And hence, we are focusing a lot on engagement uh, per se. Uh, but as, as a business, if you look at the funnel, more on the awareness side of it, uh, more on uh, utility side of it, rather than uh, uh, pushing for sales. That's how I'm looking at engagement. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, Ramlingam, I'll ask you one question about consumer behavior, something which has been one of the favorite topics for me personally. Uh, there have been certain changes. Uh, People are a little afraid to spend money now, mostly because of the uh, doomsday uh, feelings that they have, uh, quite rightfully so, because as we know, again, the lockdown has been extended and we don't really know when it's really going to be back to normal. People are afraid to invest traditional instruments and they probably feel that money better off uh, at my bank. I don't really want to play the market right now. Maybe the same for crypto as well. They might say, you know what, I'll just probably wait for a certain time. Is there a contingency plan for something like this, an eventuality like this where liquidity just ends up drying entirely? How, how do you affect consumer behavior? How do you influence it positively to start to bring things back to normal? So, uh, see, what, what, what has happened is... Uh, if I look at the overall financial market, right, uh, from a from a macro angle, right, yes, people are holding money right now, and uh, they are afraid to take certain decisions, right. But people are also looking at uh, this as a time for uh, them to uh, try to figure out what new things they can uh, do and figure out where else can they invest. Right. Anyone who's playing the financial market clearly understands, like. Right? money in the bank is value getting eroded. So they are focusing on trying small experiments. Right? So as a, as a consumer behavior change, if you want to ask what has happened in the crypto industry, we have seen a lot of uh, wallets being created. When I say wallets, uh, basically there are accounts. right? So a lot of accounts created with us, but with smaller denominations. Right? So the overall holding has gone down. Right? Uh, but the number of wallets have grown up. So that is something that I feel that people are trying to do. Okay, They are trying to take smaller bets. Now, in this journey, cryptocurrency faces a lot of uh, additional challenges beyond people uh, committing money. They also have challenge of uh, explaining the technology or explaining the market per se. Right? Mm -hmm. So we, we expect that people will not come in with, the, with, with their large portfolio. And uh, as, a, as a campaign, we ourselves are talking about 1%. Right? Why don't you diversify 1% of your portfolio in crypto? 
right? This is something that we are talking to people. How do you start your journey in crypto? And uh, what we have realized through our user research is uh, once people start seeing the portfolio changes, once people start seeing the uh, benefits uh, and they start seeing, so people are not really worried about the positive uh, or the losses that they are making. They are more worried about understanding the system and trying to crack it. Right? And that's, that's a classical uh, male behavior. And which is their part of a, a trading market. Right? Uh, 40 days has been, uh, or 40, 45 days now, has been a remarkable uh, break. However, I feel that people are reaching to go. Right. Even, in, even during recessionary times in the past, yes, like there was a liquidity crunch, but then there were opportunities. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, a, in a previous discussion with someone else, I had highlighted this point, like, WhatsApp, Instagram, these are the things that actually are products of the previous recession. Right? They, they, they were uh, founded during that time and they, they grew during that time uh, because, and they did attract capital. Sure. It, it's not about uh, uh, what will happen today is the ease, the ease at which the capital is available becomes restricted, but uh, eventually people will have to uh, start uh, investing and they would then be looking at uh, places which are safer, places which give them better returns, places which have a, a smaller lock-in period, for example. These are the uh, things that people are looking out for and uh, that is where we are seeing traction because uh, crypto gives, say, for example, we provide a seven-day lock-in period for any investment asset right? and we provide uh, as high as 12% returns on some of our assets with say uh, with with a complete uh, guarantee of your funds like we we have to, we are focusing on that as an aspect so that's where we are seeing attraction and um, if we understand the problems that the users are facing right, uh, we'll be better able to address them and that is where i feel uh, uh, crypto is providing an alternative uh, irrespective of our it's not about just our business, it's across the industry, across the board. We have seen uh, some of our uh, competition also attracting good, uh, uh, good business. Right? Uh, primarily because of, um, uh, because if any business can understand the problem, uh, they will be able to easily uh, resolve it. It's, and it, it is all about being sensitive to what's on the ground. Right? And Personally, I feel this COVID-19 thing is something which is a much more simpler solution. I would put it this way because everyone's affected. It's, mm -hmm. it's not that the customer is something, someone who is different from me. I'm also this, going through the same challenges. So it's, it's easier for me to understand what my customer is facing compared to say a non-COVID time, right? Where I really don't know what my customer is going through. So that is, uh, in a way, an advantage of the overall situation. Superb, superb. I really like that uh, last comparative example that you made, most definitely. I think uh, most of us, most brands have started to look uh, through that lens because everybody is in this together. And uh, yeah. I, I can't really say, uh, I can't really remember the number of times I've heard that line from brands, but uh, it's true. So the next question, which uh, is somewhat related, I'm going to post to you as a fellow marketer. Mm -hmm. Most brands today are, of course, trying to understand or rather trying to crack the problem of uh, connecting with the user, right? Uh, the strategy that they had earlier, of course, pre-COVID was very different and COVID changed uh, the landscape and it flattened the landscape in many ways. What do you think is the best engagement strategy right now for consumer brands, digital consumer brands out there? Okay. Uh, so what, has, what I realized is uh, the customers have actually come closer. Right. Uh, this is what I have felt. The customers have also started uh, having a sense of appreciation uh, of what work people are doing. For example, right. Uh, right. At the start of the lockdown, right? There were a lot of complaints in our in our support side, right, where people did not get it the way it wanted. They, they expected it to happen. Right? There was a period of time, a couple of days, where we had this 
challenge like business was not as usual right and uh, suddenly my users were getting uh, worried like what's what's going on but then uh, as soon as they started seeing the effect on themselves and their work right, uh, they also started uh, commenting talking about it so um, as a business we we run say for example we have our own uh, community channels uh, like we have our telegram channels and stuff where our community is set up what we start uh, saw a change was from complaints there were a lot of people also uh, fighting for us in the sense uh, they were saying are hota hai this is the problem this is what's the problem in uh, mumbai so the lockdown in mumbai was uh, a few days in advance before uh, the national lockdown came in, right so people started realizing that they they realized that they are part of it right it's not just the brand saying it right? it's even the people saying that they are all in it together so that is one thing that uh, we understood um, but the other bit that as a strategy that we focused on is uh, is being a bit compassionate right so trading is as a business right that you are you will if you make a mistake you might lose a lot Right. and you so there is an opportunity to gain a lot of money there is an opportunity to lose a lot of money right and uh, there could be a mistake that someone has done there could be a mistake because for example internet issues right they, these are common right uh, or accessing their own funds okay so we felt that as a as an engagement strategy or as a as a strategy for our customers we should be a bit more compassionate we should be a bit more forgiving right uh, in a traditional sense if someone makes a mistake then there would be uh, there would be a policy for compensation we decided to have a, a different compensation policy right uh, we had a limit of having a non kyc transactions up to 5000 rupees right okay. and at 5000 you can do a non kyc transactions now uh, we realized that this would become a challenge during this period so we increased that limit to 10000 rupees so people without kyc can do a transaction up to 10000 so this is a decision that we took because it's a challenge right it's not that it's easy right we in during this period uh, we focused on instant withdrawals right we focused on um, uh, zero fees right so what we did was uh, currently uh, there's no comp- no one else in the competition that is providing zero withdrawal uh, or zero deposit fee right uh what we did was in order to make it instant we also made it uh, zero so that whenever someone is doing a transaction when they get their money back they don't have to lose out on some portion and yes there is a effect on our business pnl but that is something that like for example where do the my marketing budget go that's where it goes right? and i'm happy to spend it in that direction right? i'm okay to take a hit in my marketing budgets if i get that kind of value out to my customers true true so we gave we started doing much more competitions right we started to have have lot many awards or lot many prizes uh, so instead of doing a trading competition with 20 prizes now we are doing it with 50 prizes instead of so instead of having few winners we are having a large quant, quant, uh, amount of winners so that the prizes get distributed people have also have get a, get a good chance to participate right and so everyone wins something right? mm-hmm. uh, additionally we focused a lot on uh, incentivizing uh, uh, so we ran a, a referral program right where we incentivized people to join the uh, uh, join the movement as well, as well as get rewarded for being part of the movement right? so various activities around this uh, front what we have also started to do over the period is focusing a lot on uh, so there is something called an air drop and a give away concept that is there in cryptos right so we have focused a lot more there uh, we have tried to uh, reduce overall cost of business we try to reduce the friction points again we find this is to be a good time to improve the overall uh, processes right uh, we consciously went ahead and uh, we uh, are working on a lot of things like uh, automated kyc for example it's under testing right now but there is something that we are working on right we are working on uh, uh, get so we we got ourselves iso certified so this is a conscious decision to go ahead and do that like there is no there is no requirement there is no there is no precedent in the industry but we said like let us get it, get ourselves third party certified so that we are very clear that my process does not add a layer of cost right 
so these are the uh, elements that small small places that we have touched to ensure the overall uh, uh, cost to run or cost to be part of the uh, business does not affect the customers so much because again um, my customers could be real big uh, hnis to say a, a small uh, uh, a small uh, trader right i don't want them to be affected uh, also because currently they are not able to trade in other markets or they are not able to fly on their existing trade this is a good source of money where uh, or a good source where they are coming and probably earning some amount of money so with all these focus in mind we improved our overall strategies brilliant brilliant that was super comprehensive fantastic so a few of those things i think most definitely are going to help you build that trust that you really want especially in your industry and of course that will uh, play a ra- large role in the whole overall cx yeah. my next question is of course uh, related to few of the points that you mentioned it's about retention and yeah. at this point of time where certain brands are struggling to influence the second the third the fourth purchase what what is that one critical factor that marketers and brands need to focus on that can really improve the user retention rate okay uh, so i so right now the market is very skewed right there is um, so i i was just observing a few days back right that customers are talking to a certain set of people certain uh, businesses right where those businesses don't have to focus on retention where the customers are going and telling like for example the, the simple grocery guy right i have seen customers going and saying ye mere liye nikal ke rakh le like keep this side aside for me so that or let me notify me when uh, my particular good or uh, my particular requirement is fulfilled right so there are these industries who have now attracted a lot of capital and then there are these industries which are losing the uh, these the amounts of uh, or the customers uh, wallet share right uh, what what i personally feel from an overall macroeconomic view is uh, this i was discussing with uh, some of my colleagues from jbms right my one of my classmates and i was talking about this whole concept being like a pinch so the, the, there is a flow of capital and the flow of business right and there there is a pinch and right now it is uh, this covid 19 has pinched the overall flow but when it opens up right there will be a burst and there will be a outflow right? and businesses need to prepare for that day so uh, from a uh, influencing the second purchase i would rather focus on influencing uh, top of the mind recall as a, as a mm-hmm. uh, ensuring when the pinch gets removed we should have the customer running back to us because uh, unless there is a demand right you don't have a right to be in business in any case right? you are in business because there is a demand and that demand is going to come back it's not that it's it's disappeared that demand is going to come back and you'll have to wait for it okay uh, but what can you do as a as a market here is when that demand does come back they come back to you okay? so engaging from that perspective right being on top of the mind helping people out is something that a brand should focus on or a, or a business should focus on for at this point if they are not able to attract sales and uh, this is where uh, business have to be smart business have to understand uh, what their customers are going through and accordingly uh, come up with uh, whatever way in which they can contribute uh, retention will happen if the customer believes that even during this tough period this particular brand helped me out with my requirements and uh, that is many many successful brands are doing it right now Uh, but i think that is the right way if sales cannot be pushed fair fair i think uh, i completely agree with your points first of all i think once some brands uh, solve the problem of uh, survival i think uh, certain industries like say, travel which has been one of the worst hit i think this whole uh, everything that you've just outlined definitely falls true for travel industry most definitely few others as well yeah. uh, great point all all great points that you mentioned now right at the beginning of our conversation you had mentioned that this is probably the best time to continue branding to build the brand right uh, branding has always been uh, capital intensive that's the place where 
brands put in the money so that it's uh, it's, it's always seen as a long term kind of uh, an activity which is fair and brands are of course not built overnight right now a lot of brands are thinking differently they want to of course uh, counter the whole pandemic situation so that their survival is elongated as much as possible right but there are some that like like uh, people like you as well who have made all great points like branding is very important right now so that we are uh, able to service that that need once it comes back on what is it that brands can do right now to continue branding in the right way so that it really connects with people right now is there a crisis marketing playbook in place with respect to branding uh so this is my belief right uh, if you uh, so a brand gets built in respect to what you do right? uh, so it's always good to take control right? yes brand can branding as an activity can be capital intensive uh, depending on the uh, mediums that you are selecting uh so concept wise the building a brand is more of a behavioral change more of a um uh, more of a, a change in which in which you are deciding as a strategy for the business right uh, then the next part is uh, setting up those kind of associations taking it out to public uh the mo- what has also happened during this period is the the traditionally the expensive mediums are out of question so if i look at it from a, a business perspective yes the expensive mediums are out and the more uh, direct mediums are uh, are available right every business then talks about when talks about building a brand is talk about talks about building a moat right this is the right time when you invest in building a, a stronger moat right and building uh, focusing and investing in that direction uh if if i want to call a playbook now i would focus more on connecting with my people and uh, focusing more on uh, uh, why they should be still uh, uh, in touch with the brand irrespective of whether they get the product or not communication uh, with the customer is an important aspect and today it is possible to have communication because uh, because of the overall pandemic situation your the uh, attention span has actually increased because people have more time available to focus on stuff right so in that sense uh, connecting with people becomes a, an important aspect like we'll have to come up with new ways of connecting with people and that right. is better right like uh, we'll have to explore uh, uh, me so for example uh, is not related but uh, i'm a fan of cricket right? and the Aus- in the entire thing that happened with the australian cricket team uh regarding the ball tampering and various other issues so they came up with a, a i think a four part or a six part series on um, amazon prime yep where they explain about what happened what went behind the behind right. the scenes and how they resurrected something and i think a couple of days back or i think yesterday uh, australia was the number one test ranking team mm-hmm. so within almost one and a half two years they got back where they were right? and that is the that is the crisis example right? what went wrong they focused on it and they came back uh but as a as a now bring, bringing the story out is branding right so focus so why did the australian uh, cricket board focus on creating such a uh, a video series was on connecting with people uh, at this point in time right when they they are not able to actually showcase their uh, product like cricket is not we are not able to consume cricket so they such a video series helps uh and it helps me stay connected there is right. another exactly. uh, series that has come out in netflix about the overall cricket business so i think this is sponsored by icc themselves and they are trying to explain what's happening in cricket right and uh, they find that uh, this is a good opportunity to reach out to a newer uh, newer set segment of audience where they can actually showcase what's the what the business is about uh or what the sport is all about and how how they can uh, how others can be attracted so this particular series has been created for netflix uh, and is targeted in us right where there is the traditionally the market is smaller so uh, content through education okay through being in touch with people coming out with uh, smarter ways of doing it so the film industry did us something similar 
right? There was this small video that circulated on WhatsApp about uh, various actors coming through. Right, right. With Abhichan, to Rajnikan, to everyone. This is a smart way of keeping in the in the minds of people, right? Or else, if I don't watch a movie, right? Because the Netflix, because of Netflix and stuff like that, we are or in connect. But this also helps me stay in touch, right? Uh, true, and that true. is the approach that people should uh, take. Right? They may not be able to sell their product, but they can at least sell the benefits or sell the reasons why someone should still be connected. Definitely, definitely. It's the essence at the end of the day that really stays with people. I really love the examples that you shared. Um, all good points, most definitely. Especially the acting example where show, where show the, pro, the prowess, what they really have. Of course, they can't act in movies right now. But uh, it was a great way. It was a complete DIY video as well from what I understand. All of them yeah. did it at home and it was called great editing. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, just last couple of questions from me. Uh, going forward, if I had to ask you to list down three priorities with respect to marketing engagement and communications right now, what do, you, what do brands need to focus on? What would that be according to you? So, uh, I would focus a lot more on uh, education and awareness as the most important aspect. So, Super. there are two different parts. Education about the industry or education about your brand. Right? Awareness about your brand. Uh, those are the two most important aspects uh, that people should focus on like uh, at this point in time. Uh, second bit is in, uh, community engagement. Okay. This is a good time to actually uh, for industries which have not focused on building communities. For example, uh, one thing that I have seen okay, uh, particularly B2B companies okay, have started engaging uh, and connecting with uh, uh, with lot of other uh, businesses right talking to their customers clients uh, conducting panel discussions and trying to solve problems right it's a good time to build that kind of a, a connection at this point in time and uh, the last thing is uh, this is being this is the time to be uh, i know uh, it it is uh, it is a liquidity crunch everywhere but it is a good time as a business to fo focus on being a cockroach right? uh, so this is a good time to uh, be very wise uh, be very strategic in your uh, plans and uh, accordingly build your uh, build your business and take it through this tough time awesome awesome and this brings me to the very last question which is my favorite uh, considering I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to sci-fi movies and I feel that we are in a sci-fi movie of our own all of us are living it literally every day and what, what, what are your thoughts on work from home as a definite future for us are we headed towards a work from home reality uh, yep yeah, so so I always felt that uh, I would enjoy work from home right? uh, I always felt that uh, it is, it is something that um, I believe that I was a very introvert kind of a guy and I felt it, it would be a great time to just on your own and uh, sure. uh, unfortunately that's not how the entire team works. If it's an entire workflow mode for everyone. Right? I have seen this across not just my organization but across various organizations um, that people tend to work a lot more during this period and one of the thoughts that work from home would actually improve work-life balance. I feel during this period in time, we, I have seen that work-life balance has actually worsened rather than... That's uh, true. That's true. Uh, so, from that perspective, yes, a new cultural change is required. The way in which we are looking at work from home today may not be the right solution. Uh, however, businesses feel that this is a good opportunity right, to actually test things out. So, uh, this is a growth experiment, if I would like to put it that way. Right? This is an experiment that we are doing. Uh, we are getting an opportunity to be, in a way, forced to do this experiment. Um, my my uh, CEO actually had written a, a small post about it on LinkedIn. Right? Can that thing be, uh, can work from home be actually true? There are a lot of advantages for a business. Right? Uh, but my, my, if I talk to my team, right, everyone is itching to get back. They are all saying that let's get back, and probably because we are marketers, right? So marketers don't like to 
uh, like for an engineer or for someone in the tech side of things, perhaps this, this is fabulous, right? Yeah, um, sure. But uh, see, what is happening is uh, a lot of time is spent on uh, meetings. Right. right. So any any process management uh, guru would obviously talk about how to reduce meetings, and unfortunately, work from home has increased that. True. It would have been uh, like a couple of questions, just going to the next guy and asking a few questions and that's it. Uh, if it was uh, in the office, but now it becomes a scheduled call of 15 minutes. On, right. And that is where it's starting to actually exceed. Plus uh, infrastructure, I feel is still uh, not, not that great. Uh, perhaps uh, like if beyond the lockdown, we can focus a bit more on the infra bit. Like, if today the internet goes down, uh, there are very limited options because of the lockdown right? uh, of repair or finding an alternative. Right. But, uh, post the lockdown, yes, I feel that there will be a lot of investment in that direction. Um, the 5G network that we are about to enter into will also help us a lot. But a lot of focus would be on behavioral change. And I feel that that is something that the com company should start in uh, investing in. Maybe... Uh, so I have worked in businesses in the past where the entire thing, like when I started my own business, it was a complete remote thing. Right? Mm -hmm. I, had, I had my team working from four different locations across the world. Mm -hmm. right? And we found that to be the most effective way of getting things done. Mm -hmm. But as, as you grow in your business, I think that will become a bit more challenging. Um, but the, if I go by the recent news, like TCS made a news that they want to push 75% of their business now. If TCS can think of it, I think smaller business can. Definitely. It, it requires a lot of lot of behavioral change, a lot of uh, effort from uh, various people. Um, and I definitely feel we need to bump up the infrastructure a bit more for things to uh, happen the way we would like it. Awesome, awesome. That's all from me. Uh, thank you so much, Ramalingam, for your candidness, the way you answered some of the questions. I loved a few of your examples and insights. We are going to be uh, 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 doing a mega, this was supposed to be a 20 minute episode and it's become a one hour episode. But uh, so much of information. Thanks a lot, Ramalingam, once again for your time. Thank you, Dream. Thank you so much for having me.